Hello, so Crawl4A has uh, become recently one of the most popular web scraping libraries, mainly because it provides a lot of ways to crawl web pages and seamlessly interact with a large language model so that you can easily extract structured data from the call pages. So as you can see, uh, the crawl for AI library allows you to crawl the pages and get results in variety of formats like you can get the entire HTML or the cleaned HTML by removing the tags and scripts. You can also get data in markdown format. You can also extract uh, or save the content or the page as a PDF for a screenshot, links and media and various other options. And then it also allows you to extract the content using an LLM or more deterministically using a CSS uh, by specifying, you know, uh, the CSS selectors you can extract the data. It also allows you to interact with the page by clicking the links or so that you can handle pagination a uh, lot more infinite scroll pagination etc. So the best uh, method to familiarize with the library is I would recommend that you go to the documentation at docs.crawl4ai.com and it's all oh, it, it's it's well put out documentation you can you can learn about all the features that it offers. So uh, this code right here, it shows the very simple uh, code uh, using which you can uh, crawl a URL and uh, print uh, the extracted content from the page in markdown format. Now, um, before we dwell into the code, uh, while using crawl for AI, uh, there are mainly three things uh, to know about. One is the browser configuration, then the crawler configuration and the extraction strategy. It's a browser configuration is what allows you to specify uh, the parameters or attributes of uh, the browser instance. So consider uh, this like the tab of a Chrome browser. So you can specify uh, the dimensions, the width and height of uh, the browser tab. You can specify the queues or headers, the user agent. You can also, in fact, uh, uh, specify the type of browser which you want to run beneath, whether it is Chromium or Firefox or WebKit. And once you have a browser instance running, the crawler run config specifies, you know, how you plan to extract data from it, how you interact with it. So it offers uh, various extraction strategies, like you can use a large language model to extract structured data, or you can specify CSS selectors and get the data in a more controlled and deterministic way, but will be more specific for the website for which you are coding this uh, uh, script. It also lets you generate a markdown of, from uh, the HTML and various uh, methods are provided to filter the content. You can eliminate sections which you are not interested, you can specify which all sections of the page which you want. You can also specify the JavaScript code which you wish to run on the page. So this can be used to click uh, buttons and submit forms, how to wait for the page once you do an interaction and how to take PDF and screenshots. Also whether you want to you know, use the local cache or get the data fresh from the web every time you run. And then you have the extraction strategy which is actually a part of the crawler run config. You can specify whether you plan to use a last language model to extract the data or a CSS uh, rule based schema. So now let's delve into the code. So you can see uh, the code starts with the standard imports and we are using a Pythantic uh, schema model to specify the data which you are interested in. So our aim in this uh, video is to scribe uh, the product data from Amazon product listings. So, so this is the page and we plan to scrape the product name and price from multiple pages by clicking the next button. And this is our aim. So this is a URL which I have mentioned here in the Amazon product URL and I've also specified the number of pages which you need to scrap. You can change this. Uh, in this demo we are uh, scraping three pages. Now uh, the important thing, the browser config. Headless false uh, meaning we want the browser to be displayed. We want to visually see the browser so that we can see the whether the page is loading correctly, whether the next page link is uh, functioning properly, etc. I've also specified the width and height of the browser and web which brings more details. And I've also provided a session name. 
so that when I interact with this browser in serious successions, I maintain the same session because once I load the start uh, URL, I want you know I want to uh, keep running in the same page and interact with this page while I scribe data from uh, the subsequent pages. So that is uh, the browser configuration, and uh, we are doing this for a loop for a number of pages. And then we specify the crawler run configuration. Now uh, you can see that I'm selecting the data only from a specific CSS selector. So if I go back to the page and if I inspect taking a bit of time. Yeah, so these are these are the list items on the page which we plan to scrape and you can see that it's all divs the parent element is a div with the raw list item so i'm only interested in those uh, selectors so when i specify the css selector as this the crawl for a extracts the content within uh, those uh, selectors within these selectors so it, it extracts the only the css corresponding to these parent elements and it will not uh, worry about scraping the other content of the page which can confuse the LLM. So that is what is specified here. Then I've also specified the session name and I'm bypassing the cache every time. I'm not interested in external links on social media just to speed up scraping and to remove unnecessary data. Now I've mentioned the content extraction strategy as LLM strategy which we will get to into a minute and there are some parameters which I provide only when the page is not page zero so page zero means you are directly loading uh, the first page and from then on we are going to stay in the same page and we are using going to use javascript code to load the next page so if page is greater than zero uh, use only javascript do not load uh, reload the page and the js code provided is a code to load the next page so this is the code which i have provided Now if I copy and go back to the browser and go to console, now this code document.get elements by class name, uh, what it does is you can see it gets the next, it correctly identifies and gets the next page element. And when I do a dot click, it just loads a second page. So this is a JavaScript code which I provide to load the next page and they have also mentioned a wait for code. Why this is required? Because once we run the code, it, the page will take some time to load the next page and display all the products. So if I copy this and again go to the browser. this element you can see is the parent element of all these listings so this dot child element count would be the number of products listed under the page so it's 39 products per page so i will just wait till it it's about 10 so that's fair enough that that's a, that's a good metric to know that the page is loaded correctly so the wait for code is also provided for page one the second page onwards so this is the crawler run configuration and this is where we actually perform the crawl by providing the url and the crawler configuration and we get the result uh, in json format and uh, we are printing uh, the first five the details of the first five products per page so uh, the code is very simple i will leave uh, the link in the description below and let's now just try running the code uh, the code So it opens the browser. This is the same URL which we have mentioned in the code. And now it's uh, providing the data to the LLM to extract the product name and price from this page. It will take a while. You can see um, it got the price 
name and price of the first of all the products and I've printed only the first five and it, it goes to the second page and so on so I forgot to um, show you uh, the LLM strategy which I'm using so the extraction strategy which we use is LLM so this is the single uh, piece of code which this this uh, product name and price extraction so see how simple it is so I'm using the LLM sub extraction strategy I'm using OpenAI you can even use a cloud uh, provider like OpenAI or you can even use LM Studio or Olama to learn the model locally you can run an open source model locally and you know interact with it rather than going for the paid option and I provide a schema so this is the data which I need I need a product name and price so that is the that's provided using the pyrantic data model and then the instruction to the LLM is extract product name and price from the content and I've also um, provided a chunking mechanism so that you know the model may have its own context uh, length limit so uh, the library allows you to chunk uh, the content uh, based on that context uh, window limit and you can mention that by apply chunking is equal to true and specifying the length of uh, the chunks uh, which your model can handle and there are some extra arguments where you can uh, specify the temperature of the model whether the model will be more uh, deterministic so it synthesis extraction we don't want the model to be using to use any sort of imagination we want it to be as deterministic as possible so the temperature is close to zero so I hope you uh, this video is uh, useful for you uh, I would recommend that you just go to uh, the documentation page of uh, crowd for AI and if you have any questions Please let me know in the comments below. Thank you.